and welcome to Talking Europe. Originally used to descale pipes, the world's most popular weed killer is now said to be part of our daily bread. Its residue in our environment and increasingly perhaps our bodies. Glyphosate is dividing scientists across the globe. Some, including experts at the WHO, fear that it could cause cancer. But the European Food Safety Authority says it's safe. The current licence for the use of glyphosate is about to expire and some MEPs say it's time to stop its use altogether. So is it a useful tool for growing crops or could it possibly be a cancer-causing chemical? And what about the other herbicides and pesticides we regularly use? Well, to give us uh, uh, their view and make things a little bit clearer, we're joined in studio by Mr Pavel Potts, uh, Czech MEP. You were with, you're with the Socialists and Democrats and you are part of the Environment Commission here in Brussels. You wrote the motion, actually, to stop the use of this weed killer. Uh, also, sit at the other side of the table, we have Miss Julie Gerling from the UK, one of the MEPs that voted against that motion, if I understand things correctly. Uh, also with us from Hungary, we have Mr Benedikt Javor. You sit with the Greens here in Brussels, and you also have questions about this weed killer and its potential dangers. And the finally, uh, last but not least, we have Mr. Jose uh, Tarazona, head of the pesticide unit at that European Food Safety Authority, an institution set up by the EU to test chemicals. Uh, let me start, perhaps, Mr. Tarazona, with your good self. Um, we had uh, new studies come out from the EFSA saying that it's unlikely that glyphosate uh, causes cancer. Unlikely isn't very reassuring. How unlikely is it? Well. I think that the first I need to clarify that what EFSA has said is that glyphosate, like many other pesticides, is toxic. We have recommended toxicological reference values, so there is a maximum le level that uh, EFSA is uh, recommended. And most of the debate has been on carcinogenicity. But the EFSA assessment is a comprehensive assessment. In our conclusions, we are setting some recommendations for the protection of the environment. We are also setting uh, recommendations for the protection of uh, human health. So it is. So it's, we need to, it's, <coughs> we need to draw back somewhat. Safely. Regarding carcinogenicity, the, the difficulty in, the, in explaining the difference is because IR and EFSA are using different methodologies. IR, you say that's the International Agency for Research on Cancer. They, they say it does they, they change our DNA, which is yeah, a precursor to cancer. Probably carcinogenic. And the main reason, let, let me put an example. We are suggesting the values that are considered that of low concern for human health is 0.5 milligrams kilogram body weight. When you have the animals and you expose the animals to 8,000 times more, mm -hmm. at these very high doses, the animals uh, develop some uh, effects. But this weed killer has been around since the 70s. Uh, uh, let's take a quick look, a closer look at exactly what it is and how it's used. Uh, Mathilde Benezet reports. A full extension of the license or a total ban. The European Parliament put forward a compromise solution. Approvato. MEPs gave the weed killer, glyphosate, market approval for another seven years instead of 15 as requested by the European Commission. The adopted text still noted concerns about the chemical's potential health risks. The European Parliament said the use of the herbicide should be limited to professionals only and that it should not be used in public places like parks and playgrounds. Glyphosate is the most widely used weed killer in the world. The European Parliament's resolution is non-binding but sends a strong message to the European Commission ahead of its final decision in June, when the current licence expires. The Commission has asked for all scientific data related to the product to be sent as soon as possible. The debate about the weed killer heated up last year, after the WHO's International Cancer Research Centre said glyphosate was probably carcinogenic to humans, a claim contradicted by the European Food Safety Authority six months later. Well, uh, Mr. Potts, this uh, glyphosate, it originally was a Monsanto project, but now I believe it's being used in a, a myriad of weed killers. Uh, are your fears, Mr. Potts, that it's it, the, the amount we use, that that's what's dangerous? It's always difficult to, 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 to judge in <coughs> compounds like glyphosate. This, where there is a suspicion that it can be also an endocrine disruptor, and mm. which has a Changing mode of action which is deep in, in metabolism, deep in cellular metabolism. And I don't <coughs> think that uh, there is any any safe level when, when we are thinking about this, this compound as possible uh, uh, um, endocrine disruptor as well. Miss Gerling, it does sound like a, <coughs> using a vast amount of a chemical 
in any case can't be good for us. Do you think there's a safe level or...? Oh, of course. I'm absolutely sure that there are safe levels for chemicals. If, if I wasn't sure of that, uh, I certainly wouldn't be advocating the continued use of them. The whole point about chemical regulation is that we know that pesticides kill pests, we know that herbicides kill uh, plant pests, they kill. That's true. They are toxic if you use so them in very large amounts. The whole point about regulation is establishing the amounts that you can use them in where they will not affect human health. But you have to rely on them being used properly, of course. That's part of the regulation. Because the only reason we use them really is to allow for perhaps intensive farming. No, not at all. They're used, for example, on, <coughs> on runways at airports. So you've got a, a runway that you want to keep in good condition condition because you don't want um, plants. You've seen mm -hmm. plants coming through tarmac, I'm well, sure, I, and I up have between on my balcony, cracks, but of course. I pull you them. can't have that on, on an airport runway because that's a safety issue. You need a chemical to make sure that that doesn't happen. So yes, they are used extensively, but they, they're, they are not only used in intensive agriculture. This is, they, this is, this is um, something that's put about to, to try and demonise them, in my view. Mr Yavor? Well, I believe that the, the key question regarding glyphosate is the uncertainty of its effects on human health and the environment. And the, the, the debate, I think, it's around that uh, statement. EFSA and those who support uh, glyphosate uh, permitting are saying that it's completely safe and there is no any evidence uh, to say that uh, uh, there is some bad effects on, on human health like cancerogenity or, or endocrine disruptor nature. But uh, we have some uh, evidences from WHO which say that they believe that uh, uh, glyphosate might be uh, uh, cancerogenic and um, the procedure followed by EFSA uh, doesn't make it completely transparent those studies which uh, make them uh, deciding uh, uh, permitting uh, what's, or what's safe supporting or uh, glyphosate so uh, while we have the position of WHO which is stating that uh, glyphosate is a potential uh, carcinogenic uh, material, then we have an F supposition, which um, says that it's not, but we cannot see most of the, the studies which this position is not based on. And, and, and one. Can I correct that? Because not it, most of. But but some, this is definitely some, a question a lot of critics and, say. One question last, the secrecy. One last sentence. Fine. I think there is a high level of, of uncertainty, and in a situation like that, I think it's not responsible to give a 15 years of permission to a, a substance, to a material which uh, we don't know exactly Mr. what Charles effect it has. There is a lot of critics about the studies. So secrecy the of the studies. That, uh, all the studies on carcinogenicity are not published. Also, the, Why? Uh, the studies are not published because according mm. to the legislation, the legislation of the European Parliament and the Council, what yeah. we publish are the summary That's, dosages. That is a now problem for all, the public. We, we, we have, what, what we have published are summaries of every single study. Yeah. So we have summaries of every single study with all the key information. So for the public, all the information is, is already there. It's 6,000 pages Mr. with Fox. the summaries of the studies and the assessment ah. by, by the scientists. Yes, you have 6,000 pages and so on. It doesn't mean, in fact, that it is, it is all true and, and it is all science about glyphosate for a second. And uh, there are three non-disclosed studies, which was called by somebody from EFSA as a key study. So. One is 20 years old, the youngest is seven but years old, and second, a third one is 15 years old. So it's so we outdated update, we, science. Well, we update and, and our sorry, studies. Sorry, you but used outdated science. Uh, sorry, that is not true. We are using <laughs> uh, OECD guidelines, international agreed guidelines. I, if I understand it correctly, at the EU level, when we want to test a pesticide, we elect one member state country to work on that particular pesticide. For glyphosate, it's Germany. And there are critics saying that in that German group, there's two or three scientists that work for pesticide producers. Work for? For pesticide producers. I mean, I, clearly the assessment done by Germany was done by different institutions in Germany mm -hmm. that has been appointed by the German competent authority. We are talking about scientists from the public <laughs> sector. And then you have a peer review that involved hundreds of scientists all around Europe. So if there is any concern 
on the potential conflicts of any of the experts that, uh, that are involved, you can see in the information published by EFSA all the comments by every single member state. Just by the to EU. go back to, to Germany, where they made uh, uh, the original uh, the research or study on, on, on glyphosate, concluded to abstain and not to support... Uh, You're saying the Germany positions. abstained. They didn't no, I take say that a vote. To, uh, so they didn't. But their position is still unclear. Is Let's to be clear. Going to okay. abstain. Good. Well, uh, Mr. Potts, uh, the, the glyphosate has been around since the 70s. It's been seen as safe as salt for many decades and, you know, very widely used. Why are we sounding the alarm now? Has anything in particular happened? Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, but I wouldn't say it this, this, this way, because if I remember well, and I have my, of course, notes here with me, uh, originally glyphosate was co classified in the USA as possibly cancerogenic for humans. In the it 70s? It's uh, 1985. Oh, yeah. uh, then it was reclassified because of pressure of industry in 1991. So concerns there are from the very beginning. Huh? During the last 20 years, I think uh, uh, a lot of evidence has accumulated also very Vertebrate metabolic pathways are influenced. So now we have a, enough evidence that there is a problem. So we should be careful. Mr. Butts, you've touched on an issue that I want to bring up there, Mr. Ms. Gerling. Um, it is, you know, all of this is linked to the economy in a, in a way. It's a massive product. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. It's going to have an a, impact on our decisions. Well, it is a fact that it's, it's, it's a high-earning product, I'm sure, for many companies. It's a fact that it is extremely widely used in agriculture, and many parts of agriculture depend on glyphosate. Uh, productivity levels in agriculture could fall quite dramatically if we don't have glyphosate. Those are all facts. How do they influence our decision-making? Well, I can't give you a matrix of that. I, you know, I can't. All I can tell you is... I don't think there's one elected member either here in the European Parliament or indeed in any of the national assemblies around Europe who would make decisions to say that a product that they have been convinced is harmful to humans, we should ignore that on the basis of commerce. Nobody, I don't know anybody, and I'm offended if anyone accuses me of that. So, what do we do? We have people like EFSA. We, European taxpayers pay a lot of money for EFSA as an agency but to, to give us doubt. advice. No, precautionary principle, let's, let's deal with mm. that. I'm, the precautionary principle does say that, of course, if you do not have scientific evidence, you should proceed with precaution. With caution. Yeah. We have a myriad of evidence, as you've already heard loads, some of it contradictory. It, it, this is not an issue for the precautionary principle. This is an issue for a very hard-nosed risk assessment, risk-based approach. And that's what I'm absolutely convinced in all the work I've done is what EFSA have done. Is that we're using it to the right level? Exactly. So the and that's why I am content less. with EFSA. No, no, no. Mr. Yavor. There are some, some uh, concerns, uh, like the Hungarian a uh, member of the board of EFSA, Andrei Sikac, recently published studies uh, about the uh, endocrine disruptor nature of, uh, of glyphosate. Yeah. I think that we don't have uh, no, that you, scientific evidence you know which that the can convince issue us is that it's a safe uh, material a to be used. But is there an alternative to glyphosate? Could we do without it? Mr. Uh, I think that the... Uh, no, first, I should say that nobody wants ban of the glyphosate from okay. day to day. Nobody wants. There has to be every realistic person understands that there is a addiction. <laughs> of, yeah, of, of it's so the, widely the used it would be uh, crippling to the economy. Uh, you, yeah. you can't stop from day to day. There has to be transition period long enough to find uh, a possible uh, replacement because, if and necessary. It, but the alternative and I would don't be a weaker. Think that no? There is a necessity mm -hmm. for a replacement of this compound because you, you can use uh, 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 agro uh, uh, measures, normal like agro what? measures, like what was used in my country before 1989. No glyphosate was used. No this is just measures. one pesticide among a myriad used it's in about the European agriculture Union. methods. You can you can use different agriculture methods for weeding. You don't need to use glyphosate as it is as it used now so for, for desiccation. You think there's safer uh, alternatives? Pre, pre harvest treatment. You don't need it for this. Financial crisis in farming. Mm. I, I come from a very strong farming community. Mm. I don't know any farmers 
who are willingly signing the checks for their chemicals unless they think they're needed. Okay, and that's maybe These are needed. A big crux of the problem. A very final thing, uh, you know, we... But, but still, Julie, in, even in your Bristol, where you have, I think, a, a office, there is, a, I think, Ashley... Uh, Ashley Cord, where where they are trying to not to use. Well, well there is there's a global move know. towards organic <laughs> farming. Uh, 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 well, organic and farming so on. Is, so. is is a very real, very. I mean, the European policy supports organic farming. No, it's not farming. about I'm organic not farming. It. It's, it's about it's about caring for greenery in, in towns and so on and, and so on. And we have integrated yeah. pest so clearly, management as part of the common agricultural policy, a, and that we try to reduce. And it's clearly a very wide field to cover on this issue. But unfortunately, for now, we're going to have to wrap it up. Thanks indeed to all my guests for having being with us. Thank Thanks you. also to you at home for having watched. That brings us to the end of this half of uh, Talking Europe. See you after the news. <laughs>